How much would you pay to play on a really exclusive piano? Now, if you happen to rent out a music studio to go in to record, sometimes there's a upright piano there to play on, maybe a baby grand, or if you're lucky, a full grand piano. But I'm talking about an exclusive grand piano. A grand piano that's made from the most premium materials in the world. I'm talking about the Ravenscroft. Ravenscroft pianos come in two different sizes. There's the 220 and the 275. The 220 is a seven foot three long piano and the 275 is a nine foot piano. They're made out of the most premium materials in the world and they start at 220,000 pounds. Yeah. If you want to order yourself a Ravenscroft 275, that's £280,000. Now, if you want to rent one of these, they're still very expensive. You need the physical space to put it in, but you need actually the right kind of room to get the right sound. It's no good me trying to put a Ravenscroft in this room. You'd want to put it in somewhere like a concert hall or a treated studio with the right acoustics. So why am I talking about a £280,000 piano? Well, Ravenscroft actually teamed up with UVI and the VI Labs. And a couple of years back, they created Ravenscroft 275 as an iOS app. It's been out there a little while now, but it's been hailed as pretty much the best piano you can get on iOS. There's loads of apps that come with pianos built in, things like GarageBand and Cubasis, digital audio workstations that bundle in some sounds to get you started. But the way UVI built the app and recorded meticulously the sound of a Ravenscroft 275, then used their technology inside the app to recreate it. UVI do state it is the most realistic piano that you will find on iOS, and I happen to agree. The origins of the virtual instrument lie in the masterful creative Ravenscroft 275 Titanium Grand Piano. Titanium. The piano is made from a 1,000 year old Sicta spruce wood with solid titanium string termination points. Wow. If you want to play staccato, the hammer attacks, they're all there inside this app. Now it's all sample based, but what they've done is they've used a hybrid modeling synthesis to actually create this. And I think that works really, really well because it is the best sounding piano on iOS. So let me stop talking about it and let me show you how it works. So you join us here at the desk and we've got the Artoria Key Lab plugged into the iPad and then we've got the sound out of the iPad and you'll be able to hear me as well. So let's launch Ravenscroft 275. And when you first come up to it, it's just got the classic sound. Now right out of the bat, what you need to do is you need to turn on any MIDI controllers that you've got. So if I play at the moment, we can't hear anything. So we need to go up to the gear icon and go to audio MIDI preferences. Now you can see the sample right there and the audio buffer size. What we want to do is I need to turn on, it's already recognized that I've got a Keylab Mark II 49 and we need to turn on MIDI. We can test this. And that works and I've used the sustain pedal and that works as well. You've also got Bluetooth MIDI and we've also got MIDI output so you can actually send it out again to a different place. Uh, we've also using the device's iOS audio but then if you were to plug that in say I can plug this into iDAM and you could use that with a Mac. The audio buffer size is dependent on which iPhone or iPad you have and how fast it is but we'll leave it at 256 samples for now and see how we go. But the user interface is incredibly simple. Right at the top we've already done it we went to the gear icon but if you go to the gear icon you've got options and you can play around with the tuning and also the sustain pedal noise volume as well which I've just left as it really is. We'll close that off. You've got audio MIDI preferences we've just been through and the other thing is about and it gives you information about the version that we're on and obviously that it's from UVI and VI Labs. Next at the top is your preset and we start with the classic and there's 10 presets which are factory presets and you have user presets as well. Now you can access these just by tapping them or right next door to there there's a right and a left arrow so if I tap that it literally goes to the next one and the next one and the next one. So we'll leave it on classic for now. Next door to the errors is save. Let's say you've made some changes. You like the way it sounds. You can click save and then that will be saved under the user presets. And finally on the top bar, you've got the master volume out, which is a slider and you can change. So without further ado, let's have a listen to what this sounds like.
Now, if you haven't got a MIDI keyboard and you're just using the iPad or the iPhone, a nice little tip for you is the keyboard that's on the screen. If you play the notes at the very, very bottom, it's playing at the hardest velocity you can. And if you play at the top, it's the softest velocity. Let me show you. That's really cool. It's a really nice, simple interface, really useful. Across the middle here, we've got obviously the picture of the Ravencroft 275, which is just fabulous. And you've got an equalizer, a reverb, and velocity. It's really nice and simple. It keeps it really clean. Now, the Classic doesn't have the equalizer on it at the moment. You've got the reverb there, which is the UVI Spark reverb, which is integrated in. You've got decay, size, and mix. And then you've got the velocity. So the velocity amount is full. And of course, we can change this, and you can also change the curve as well. Now I've got a 49 note, but if you had an 88 note keyboard, of course, you could have the full range. I've got my octave up and down here. And if I play it very lightly, very hard, staccato. Now, before we continue, if you are finding value out of this content, then please give this video a thumbs up. It helps me and it helps spread that out to more people so they can see this video as well. Now, let me show you more from the user interface. Now, when you hit the actual pedal I've got connected, you'll see it here. It comes up at the sustain, just lights up, but you can actually tap that on permanently. We can turn it off. You've also got split and unlock. So split actually splits the keyboard into two halves on the screen. And you've also got unlock. So if you haven't got a keyboard here and you want to get access to lower notes or higher notes, you can move the keyboard up and down. Let's have a listen to the 10 presets that are on Ravenscroft. Now a little indication to note at the top right hand corner, the very, very top right hand corner, whilst you're playing, you'll see a little yellowy orange bar. And that's how much processing it's actually taking up. So you can see on this 2018 iPad Pro, it's not taking up that much at all, which is incredible. Now if you really wanna hear how good the UVI Spark Reverb is, check out Prometheus. Nice big reverb there.
very different. Now I believe the whole point of presets is to find something that you like and tweak it to make it your own. Now these have been designed by people at UVI and obviously talking to people at Ravenscroft, but I really like Prometheus. I think it's nice. It's got a really big reverb, but you might want to play around with the mid tones or the high tones a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with the timbre a little bit. Of course, I can adjust them. So I want that a little bit duller. Maybe the size of the reverb just down a little bit. Turn the velocity down a little bit and change the curve. I think my old piano teacher would be killing me right now because I'm using the wrong fingers in the wrong place. Sorry. So for whatever reason, let's just say I now have changed this, I've messed around with it a little bit, and I like it. We literally just click save. We can save it as my preset, so we're just gonna call it JP's Distant Piano, and then click save. And that's it. So under the preset list now, we've got the factory and we've got user, and you can see there, JP's Distant Piano and everything's been saved. But just the straight classic preset is absolutely lovely. This is how it sounded when they recorded it in the studio. With just a little bit of reverb. Now, a 280,000 pounds piano sampled at its highest rate and synthesized to be put on iPad and even iPhone. How much is that app? worth. Currently it's about £35 and that's a really good price considering you get an access to something that costs thousands. But also UVI have periodically dropped the price to around about £17. Now a couple of things as well that is integrated into this is the UVI's Spark Reverb. That's another thing that UVI make which is a really really cool reverb that's built in to Ravenscroft 275 so you can use it with all the presets. Plus the audio that you're listening to from it is lossless, it's flak, so it's the highest quality you can get and there's no compression. Add into the fact that it's compatible with Audiobus and inter-app audio and AUV3 plugin. It means you can put this piano anywhere, whether you're putting it into a door like GarageBand or AUM, and it's very efficient with CPU responses and the RAM. Now it's not the smallest app on the planet, it does take up around about 800 megabytes, but I think that's worth it for the highest quality piano you can get on iOS. Now system requirement wise, it works on iOS 9. We're now on iOS 12 as we currently stand. So an iPhone 5 it'll run on, or an iPad 4, the one before the very first iPad Air, or even an iPod Touch 6. So my question to you is, what's your favorite piano? Are you using Ravenscroft or are you using a different one? Have you thought about using it or are you thinking about downloading it? If you're using the pianos from say Cubases or GarageBand or you're using a synthesizer based one, it doesn't sound, quite sound realistic. I think this is the best realistic piano you're gonna get on iOS platform at the moment. And for 35 pounds, it's great value to get access to basically a piano that costs 280,000 pounds. I don't think I'll ever get a chance to play on a Ravenscroft for real. And I hope I do one day. But for now, I'm gonna be very, very happy playing with it on the iPad. Marry it up with something like a MIDI controller that's got a really good key bed, which has velocity and aftertouch sensitivity, and you've got yourself a grand piano. Pun intended. Now, if you have found the content of this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me. And if you have seen a few of my videos or you want to see more of them, maybe subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and you'll know when the next video goes live. If you want to support the channel a little bit further, you can do. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. Buy me a coffee keeps this channel alive. And to those who already have, thank you so very much. I also want to note out that on buymeacoffee.com, if you want me to help you out one-on-one -on -one personal, I have a system there where you can book me and I can actually do things like a Zoom call or a FaceTime call. Maybe you want help with looping or you want help with live streaming setup. That option is there for you. Go and check it out. So that's the Ravenscroft 275. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.